gotta do this. Um, that had to be the worst story I heard. So let me make sure I got. I have to take this stuff down and do it in a different way, cause. My story is not will be watching. To be a parent for this story to make you absolutely angry, especially when you see this video. You are so right about that, Ken. The failures of the systems that are supposed to protect children, in this case, mind-numbing. We constantly tell them if they see or hear something, say something. Well, that's what the eighth grade girl did after hearing about the threats. Still, she got attacked on a school bus, and not just by a fellow student. A warning, what you're about to see is disturbing. The videotaped attack on a 13-year-old girl is horrifying, but what you're seeing here is round two. The chaos first unfolded on a Denton ISD school bus leaving Betty Myers Middle School last week. She said, if I didn't keep, my, if I didn't keep her name out of my mouth, then she was going to be me up. This child is the one being attacked by a girl she says she didn't even know. Scared, like I was scared. When did you realize that this girl's mother and another adult had gotten on the school bus? When she screamed, Mom. And what went through your mom then? Which now I had my mama. <laughs> Not then or earlier. The 13-year-old, who wanted to be called Nicole, says earlier in the day she started hearing that the girl, new to the school, wanted to fight her. So she did what has so often been asked. She said something. Yes, ma'am. I told the, the um, assistant principal. The same day? The same day. I told the counselor and I told... The principal. Nicole says she was later told that school officials spoke to the girl, but it didn't seem to matter. We end up fighting. And I want to be really clear, Nicole, who swung first? Who started this fight? She did. And I guess um, one of the women came and put me in a chokehold on the bus. Nicole says after the adults got off the school bus, they followed it to her stop and attacked her again. Somehow she was able to phone her mother. And I heard my baby scream out. And no one did it. No one did anything. Fighting back tears, Nicole's mother says she wonders why the school bus driver failed to act. Had he locked that door, called for help, waited for the police to arrive, those grown adults wouldn't have been able to get on their bus, assault my child, and they wouldn't have been able to follow the bus and continue assaulting her. And then while, he, while they was out there fighting her, it's like he just drove off. Look closely. You can see in this video the bus pulling away as the teenage girl is being attacked on the ground behind it. I didn't deserve it. I don't think no kid deserves to go through anything like that. Her message to the women who attacked her? I have to look or watch every time I see a white car. And I have to be on watch everywhere I go because of you. Denton school officials tell me that they are unable to discuss student discipline, but could share that the girl is not returning to the campus. Nicole says she was suspended for three days for defending herself. I feel like Denton ISD failed my child. I could be a parent planning funeral arrangements if they would have had a weapon, got on their bus with a knife or a gun. What is your message to the school? Do better. If a child is reaching out to you and they telling you someone is, is bothering them and, and they trying to avoid the situation, do better. Help them. So what help is there now for Nicole? No, I'm not okay. <laughs> I 
I got hurt physically, but not just physically, emotionally. And I had to sit up at night crying about it, asking God why. But I also pray for them. I just, my mom taught me, just because they did you wrong, it's all for a reason, it's all for purpose. The other night when, when she said, Mom, let's pray, and she grabbed my hand and began to pray for them, I'm like, okay. You know? She's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe. We all hope that she's going to be all right. She was taken to the hospital later that night to be treated for her injuries, but Ken, this is something that never should have happened. It's infuriating uh, to see that video, Robbie, and, and, and it's terrifying to know, you know, that she went through this uh, and what could come of it, you know, the trauma that, that, that remains afterwards. You did mention that the other student, though, would not be returning to campus. Uh, anything else that Denton ISD had to say about this? Well, in a statement today, a district spokesperson told me, and I'm quoting, this horrible video depicts unacceptable conduct Denton ISD never condones including an adult unlawfully boarding a school bus. They also say Denton ISD has criminally trespassed the adults involved, and those individuals are no longer welcome on any Denton ISD property. Now, following the situation, transportation officials addressed the driver, reinforced procedures, and provided additional training. Mm. End quote. But remember, Ken, this is also a criminal investigation. Sure. And a Denton police spokesperson tells me that their detective is taking this very seriously, and we can expect an update in the coming days. Of course, we'll be watching. Now to a st Good morning. Good afternoon. Grand Rising family. Welcome to the mental house. With me, your host, Khadija. I hate to have to play um, a video like that, but for all of us parents out there, grandparents, um, this is this story bear hearing because it just lets you know what our kids are up against when they go to school every day if they attend a public school, okay? Because this behavior would not be accepted anywhere on any in any private school that we may have. Um, this type of behavior. Now I don't know if it's uh, because it's a, and I'm just gonna make it plain, a better class of people, or if it's because we're not all the same. Okay, some of us are fur heads and riffraffs. Okay, and some of us at least try to teach our kids some basic principles that we would think would sustain them so they could be a better human being, first and foremost. Okay, and then there are some of us who really don't give a damn. That we just, our kids just grow up and we expect the teachers to teach them. We expect them, um, we don't even have any expectation. There's some of us that don't have any expectations of learning until our kids get to school. That's another problem. And then you got a problem where the mother is only 13 years older than the, the kid. These are all uh, recipes for disaster uh, when you're dealing with trying to run a school and you have the products of these people. However... My question is today, what would be y'all's suggestion if one of your kids or grandkids was caught up in some craziness like this? I mean, this because this if they go to public school, that can be a reality. So I don't think enough of us are homeschooling. Uh, a lot of us aren't taking the time to make sure that our kids are taught before they even go to a school. We take them from the womb to the daycare. All right? So the daycare is raising your child, which messes with your child's attachment. And because your child is not really bonding and attachment has a, 
it's a different type of a, of bonding now. It's not even a normal type. Because no woman is supposed to be without her baby like that to turn him loose into a daycare while you go to work and they stick in a cold, hard bottle in the baby's mouth. Huh? And they picking them up, however, when they, I mean, I'm not saying, and don't get me wrong, for all your daycare workers, but it's nothing like the mama would pick it up or should pick it up. But if you got her so wired for disaster, see, all this stuff was engineered before it was a reality. So when you have the kid that is not able to bond with the first teacher, they not learning nothing, okay? And because you got women nowadays that said, I wouldn't dare let no baby hang off my breast. Well, some of them coming back around, but I'm saying for the majority. A lot. Too many. Because that's the only thing that can produce savages like we watching here. I don't care if you don't like what I said. Demonstrate savages. It's a savage that would go and run a mother over and her baby and kill him and know you killed him. And if you get in your car and drive away and try to hide the vehicle, if you're not driving yourself to the police station and saying, listen, I didn't want to stop because I know everybody was going to come out and beat me up. So I drove to the police station, but my God, I just ran over a mama and a child. If that's not your M.O., then you part of the problem as well. And this is the time, type of degradation that we have to put up with in these inner cities that is just insane. So you got to fight the, 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 the legislative aspect. You got to fight the police aspect. Then you got to fight your own people doing you like this. So you got the, you got, you, <laughs> and they said, why do black people expire fast? Why do they all seem to be on the edge? And it's because of the grid. It's because of the social engineering that has been done. You know, if I could make one wish, and that's why we um, are imp at Ken Services, we implement a program where we take some of these kids that's been in a um city all the time some kids never even know n n what it is to smell fresh air there or even see cows i ain't talking about at the zoo or at the so-and-so farm but to get out and you know run in the pasture or run in areas that they'll never see inside the concrete jungle Introduce them to people like Mr. Koshnick and those guys and people that are actually running legitimate. And they know these little hood kids that are high strung but brilliant. If you can take the time to wipe the dirt off the diamond. But this kind of stuff right here, if you were experiencing this kind of stuff in your high school or this is a middle school, what are you doing about it? What are the parents? I mean, because collectively it has to be something done. We can't just allow for this kind of behavior. Our kids can't learn under these circumstances just like they can't learn being shot at. And that's an, another whole video. I feel bad for the girl and um, Nicole that she wanted to be called. I'm glad you okay. I'm glad you weren't killed by ignorant adults that thought it was in their best interest to get on the bus and beat up a child. Not once, but when the bus parked, beat her up again. I thank, I thank God that you survived and that you okay. Hmm. And um, this is insane. 
And I want to know what y'all think out there. Give me your opinion. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'm going to see you in the next video.